joined in the studio now by Woodlawn CEO, Mr. John Alley. Good morning. Good morning. How are you doing? I tell you what, for a man of my age, I'm not doing too bad. Well, man of your age, you're only like 40. Oh, yeah. What do you want? <laughs> <laughs> Free healthcare. No, okay. I'm kidding. <laughs> we're, we're probably getting to that point for too much longer. <laughs> Yesterday, board meeting, uh, kind of, again, we're, we're kind of in that time where there's one item kind of dictates everything is COVID. So some other things we talked about, Becky Kopka, who's our director of surgical services, gave an update to the board on the Biomet Zimmer uh, Rosa orthopedic robot that we've had in. And, uh, you know, we've right now on average probably doing five cases a month, uh, which is several uh, knees that we're doing with this and what we're finding is the feedback we're getting from the patients what we're doing we're doing a follow-up call to every patient uh, has surgery and most of these now are going home same day next day uh, maybe you know stay overnight they're, they're home they're experiencing far less pain than what they had before and their recovery time they're up and moving fairly quickly so just rave reviews coming from those patients says boy if I'd known this, I'd had it done a lot, a lot sooner, uh, getting those knees done. So glad to hear that, that, you know, kind of what they told us, that was their selling point, a little quicker recovery time, you know, uh, much more accurate, less pain and everything is coming true. So looking forward to the next phase of the ROSA, uh, talk to their engineering department. I think it was uh, early this week, uh, maybe Monday or so. They are now going to develop an application where we can use the same robot to do hips Ooh. so we're hoping by the end of the year first of next year it's in clinical trials right now and again very promising results coming from it quicker recovery time less pain to the patients more accurate uh placement of those hips so looking forward to having that come and hopefully early next year we can start saying now we can do knees and uh hips with the rosa so uh yes yeah, it's innovation it's uh you know us older guys can go back to you, know, you young kids won't know the old Star Trek TV series where they had bones with the tricorder, you know, oh, and yeah. the diagnosing. We're almost getting to that point now, yeah. it seems like, with the innovation that we're having with the computers. And, you know, we got the Da Vinci robot and we got now the Rosa. Just what is coming forward as they find new applications to use this. And it, you know, docs are good, but when you can get the precise movement of the robot, and the exact angles that you want. It's just so much better for the patient. So excited that we've got that technology. It was a, it was a big leap for me to say, yeah, let's, let's go over this cliff. Uh, and, it's, and it's working. And the patients are really seeing the benefits with the Rosa and the Da Vinci. So it's uh, real excited to see that program grow and, and just, you know, what's over the horizon, what's coming next for those programs. Next thing we got into, and there's this little thing I, folks probably heard of, uh, it's called covid uh, no, never no, heard it's, of it. it's, yeah, well, it's out there. Oh, okay. Right now, you know, there's a fairly strong movement across the country, you know, the mandated vaccines. And a lot of healthcare organizations are currently doing that, mandating that if you want to work for our organization, you have to get the COVID vaccine. Our position at Woodlawn has been once we're told by an outside agency we have to do that, then we will. So it's coming. Uh, CMS, which is the governing body over Medicare and Medicaid, has said, okay, healthcare workers, we're going to mandate this. And we think sometime early December, the final rule has not come out from uh, CMS yet. So, you know, that's going to be an issue we're going to have to deal with. And how's that going to affect our staffing? Because we do have a, several folks saying, I will not get the vaccine. And that's their personal choice. Right. Whether I agree with it or not, that's their personal choice. So we, we really got to see how that's going to affect our staffing as we move forward. And uh, we're hoping that, uh, you know, we can get, come up with a compromise. Got to see the final bill, final regulation, how is it worded. Right now, the uh, preliminary is that they will have medical and religious exemptions built into the regulation. But I don't know what those are and how they have to be followed. So, again, the board just needs to be aware that this is coming and, and uh, it will probably take board action, uh, you know, for us to mandate the flu vaccine or flu. Flu vaccine, we already do. The COVID vaccine. So don't know where it's going to go. Uh, I'm hoping that our staff is understanding as we work through this and, you know, not get all upset, and, you know, and make a rice decision today because we don't know what that final rule is going to be. But we do feel fairly certain that uh, some sort of mandate is going to come down from the federal government. And what CMS has said is, well, you know, as an organization, you don't have to 
mandate it, but if you don't, we're not going to pay you. So any Medicare, Medicaid patients funding that we get, they just shut it off, say, you can do what you want, but we're, not, we're no longer going to pay you for services given to Medicare and Medicaid patients. So that's fairly big for us and with all health care organizations. So it's, it's kind of a big stick that they've got uh, yeah. that they're going to be wielding. So more to come. Uh, like I say, don't have final rules yet, but we're watching every day to see as more information comes out. One of the other things that we're seeing right now, we're still seeing the surge uh, of COVID you know, patients into the facility. Uh, ER volumes have probably doubled per day over the past few weeks where we've had every ER room full. We've had people in the waiting room trying to wait, and the majority of them are all COVID patients coming in. Um, so it's, at a while, we weren't able to admit some of the seriously ill folks. We were trying to find places to put them because we were full. So was everybody else. So, you know, everybody was on diversion. We're kind of off from that right now. We're kind of watching it again. Uh, the state levels have dropped a little bit. We were seeing anywhere from three to 5,000 new cases per day in the state. We're down now to 1,500 to 2,200 new cases per day. So we're seeing a little decrease. It would be wonderful if that just continues and we see that downward trend. Um, but, you know, it's just it's hard on the staff, and, and they're getting – burnout and, and you know we've lost some nurses just says i'm done i'm out of health care i can't take it anymore yeah so we've got uh, shortages in you know uh, nursing and respiratory in housekeeping and dietary folks are just saying i can't take this stress and it is very stressful for them you know with the amount of covid patients we had uh, i think at one point the most we had in house was nine covid positive patients at an inpatient status that's a lot for us because those are one-on-one -on -one patients. It takes a lot of care to take care of those. And, uh, you know, they were seriously ill uh, on vents, but we had no place to put them. You know, that every place we called said, we're full. We can't take anymore. So it's, it's been very hectic, I guess, the past about month and a half, two months. Uh, we're hoping to see some breathing room coming up here maybe the you know, end of this month, beginning of next month. And that's all I think if we just have maybe two to three weeks where we kind of take a breath and reset and go forward. Uh, the other we're seeing again now is the lack of supplies. Uh, they're just all of a sudden not available. And one of the biggest things we just come up with yesterday is IV tubing. We use a lot of IV tubing because not only in the ER but in patients and with the volumes we're having, you know, we're going through a lot of it. Well, now it's hard to get. And then uh, I was notified yesterday by our materials director that, well, if we can get it now, the cost has now gone up $400 per case over what it was a week ago. So, you know, high demand, low volume, they can charge whatever they want. So we're seeing that too. So it's kind of a double whammy. It's hard to get, and what we are getting is really expensive. So we're hoping to see an end of this at some point as we move forward. There, there's got to be some light at the end of this tunnel. Hopefully in, by the end of this year, you know, it's to the point of how many people are left to catch it uh, with as right. many of that positives that we're seeing. So with the vaccine and those who are catching it, we're hoping that all of a sudden this thing goes away by the end of the year. We finally got in after kind of going through the, the, the COVID update into the financial report for the month of August. We had gross revenue of uh, $14.7 million for the month. Deductions from revenue was about $9.5 million. So it's down about 2%. That's 62% that we wrote off. We had been writing off some 65 and 66. So a little better there. So that gives us a net patient revenue, about $5.2 million. Um, operating expenses, about five point five. So we had an operating loss right around $3,000. Not that bad, considering right. we are seeing decreased volumes because a lot of folks aren't coming in for their wellness visits. So our physician clinics, the volumes are down there. And their, their comment is, well, there's too many sick people out there. I don't want to get out. So we understand that. We're hoping we see some of those volumes because a lot of these wellness visits that they're putting off, are very important to them because it helps us track early if they have an issue coming. We have some non-operating income of about 137,000, so we actually come a net income bottom line of 134,000 for the month. So that's that's pretty nice. That's We're great. starting to see a black number there. We're hoping as we move through the rest of the year, we keep continuing to see po profitable months, so we end the year up with a, a positive bottom line. Uh, we did get some notification from one of our consultants on uh, some of the called PRF funds or provider relief funds that we got last year that we didn't know how to use. Right. We finally got some direction and uh, based upon the, their calculations and ours, we're pretty sure that we're going to be able to apply that money 
to some past expenses. And what we can uh, attribute it to is lost revenue due to COVID and additional cost of supplies. And, and so we've kind of basically got a spreadsheet done and we've got 3.7 million, I think it was, that we kind of put in the bank, didn't know what to do with. We're pretty sure we're gonna be able to uh, bring all that money back in and help offset the loss we had for lost revenue and additional expenses. So hopefully uh, next month we'll be bringing those monies back into the organization and uh, make that bottom line look a little better because we've spent the money. We just haven't been able to reimburse ourselves from these government funds. So right. got that coming. So, uh, you know, I think uh, if I'm looking at my crystal ball, we should have a profitable year in by bringing some of these funds in. And, uh, you know, so it's it's looking a little better than it did a couple months ago when we weren't sure what we could do with that money. We thought we were going to have to send it all back. Yeah, I know. Uh, that's one thing we've talked about on and off since you guys received the money is what do we do with it? Right. So I'm glad you guys are finally getting finally. that direction that says, hey, here's what you can do with it. Yeah, and it's, so. it's odd. We got the money last year and, and then the final rule how we could use it came out about 30 to 40 days ago. So, you know, everybody had this. Money. And a lot of folks went ahead and, you know, used it. I'm a little more conservative. I'd rather... If I don't know what I can use it for, I don't want to have to pay it back and then struggle at that. So we kind of put it in a, you know, put it in a sock and, and buried it out in the, the back 40 of the hospital and left it out there. And uh, so we're going to be digging that can out of the ground and bringing it back in. <laughs> but uh, it, it's kind of nice to be able to say, okay, we, we are now to that point we can apply those funds to monies we've already spent because, you know, we had to get the supply. So you couldn't wait for that. We knew we had lost revenue because of COVID because folks just not coming in and, you know, restricting surgeries and a lot of other things that we had to do to protect our staff and our patients. Now we can kind of get ourselves whole from all that. So we're hoping, again, as we move forward to see kind of the COVID dropping off by the end of the year, getting ready for flu season. So that's going to be mm -hmm. the next thing coming in. And I think, uh, you know, flu shots, I believe they're starting to become available at some of the local drug stores. I think we're going to do uh, the hospital employees uh, starting October 6th and for the whole month. Off, you know, get their flu shots for them to help protect them for the flu season coming. And uh, again, flu shots, it's the best guess. Uh, you know, CDC yep. kind of says, we think this is the five or six strains that we're going to see this year. So that's what the vaccine's for. A couple years ago, they missed it horribly. Uh, I don't think uh, the vaccine covered any of the flus mm -hmm. that were going around. Last year, it wasn't too bad. And I think with COVID, everybody stayed home. So we didn't see a lot of flu last year. Uh, this year, more folks out moving around. We'll probably see a little uptick in, in the flu. And, uh, again, just get your flu vaccine, and uh, hopefully we they've guessed that it's the right mix for this year. Now, um, as you're talking about the uh, possibility of mandating the vaccine, um, if that information is released, let's say, tomorrow, does that require a special uh, board meeting, or will you discuss that? At no, the we'll just one? wait and probably put that on the agenda for the next board meeting because, again, I think they're not going to say immediately today you have to do it. They're going to give that a phase-in period. And usually when we deal with CMS and the federal government, it's anywhere from you know, 45 to 60 days. Okay. So, uh, you know, if, if they come out and say, okay, you, you, we've approved it, this is the final rule, it'll be effective into November 1st of December. Give us some time to get our paperwork in line and, you know, basically what are the regulations as far as who is exempt and what exemptions can we accept. So it's, it's going to be fun going through all that. Yeah, uh, I'm glad I'm here and not in your shoes. <laughs> you don't want to uh, trade for a couple months? Uh, no, no, okay. no, 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 no. All right. No, no. Well, uh, Mr. Alley, thank you so much for stopping by and discussing the uh, board meeting and upcoming things with us today. My pleasure. Thank you. Look forward to doing it again next month. Yes, we'll do this again. Yeah.